Okay, time out. What are we calling this one? We're recording. Everything's going live. Cool. So I'm here today. This is the Shiloh Ranch Local Church Podcast, which is a way for us to get to know people that attend church. They can click on it and everybody will know our story. Uh, that way we don't have to, uh, you know, it, you, you're going to introduce yourself and everybody can say, how already I know about you? Because <laughs> they've heard it here. I'm with Mike Smith today. And Mike, uh, uh, tell us uh, just a, a little bit about you, what you do now and uh, uh, right now, what, what's going on in your world. Well, now I'm retired. I retired in August and got Social Security. I've been self-employed since 96. And then I'm up in Mitchell helping finish the house. <laughs> Good. So uh, what was that like to get uh, retirement age? It's a weird time, isn't it? Uh, I, was, I remember my accountant told me to put money away, and I said, why? And he goes, <laughs> he goes, well, when you retire, I go, what if I don't make it? He goes, what if you do? <laughs> well, you know, I did. Yeah. Because back then I, you know, didn't know what was going to happen. It was 40 years ago. It was like, Isn't who that? wants to put money away, right? Nobody, because we're spending it all. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, you know, I just started putting money away and now I'm able to live okay on huh? my social security. Nice. Well, you know what? That's <clears throat> That's a good lesson. I wish I, we could have done it when we were 29, but we didn't. So yeah, at least it's better than nothing. So it's it's. Uh, I wanted to uh, get to know you a little bit because you've got kind of a colorful past, and uh, you went through a very difficult time uh, pre right before COVID, actually, right in yep. the in the 2019s. And maybe just give us a little of your testimony of what what happened in your life uh, and how God kind of spared you and what took place. Well, I, I had got divorced in 2012, and then I met this lady in 2017, and we ended up getting married and went to church together, and then I knew something was wrong right around Thanksgiving, so I left. You just knew something was up. I, I could tell something was up. It's like I didn't know what it was, and then a couple months later, my ex-wife from 2012, which is Brenda, called me and said this girl had called her lady and she was going to shoot me. Wow. Well, she couldn't find me, so a week later she shot the neighbor lady. Man. And got arrested and and the, the police were there and I couldn't get any of my stuff. They wouldn't let me have none of my clothes because it was all community property. We were still married, so I just left and I was basically homeless for about three or four months. And then in the meantime, I had Brenda had called. I hired her new husband to work for me <laughs> yeah. and that he worked for me for a year and a half and we got along really well. And, you know, okay, stop right there. That's an interesting story in yeah. itself. You're good friends. Yeah. We're really good friends with now. her, with her new husband. We sit here in church every I week. I know. I watch together. you. <laughs> it's like, and, so God can overcome those kind of things and those feelings. Well, and what happened was I had this time that I didn't get to see her and, you know, when we first got divorced, it was like she took the houses, you know, the judge gave her everything. And it's like it made me mad. <laughs> but when she called me that day, I just asked for her forgiveness. And, wow. you know, I don't even know where it came from. I know it was the first thing I said is, Brenda, I, I need you to, I need to, you know, I was bad when we got divorced. I tried to hurt you intentionally. Well, that's not me. Mm. I don't say that to people. It's like, you know, you hurt me, I hurt you, we're even. Yeah. And... And so I ended up sell, uh, moving to Prineville. And in April, I bought an old house in Prineville. And then in December of that year, our daughter, Sarah, got cancer. Okay, stop right here. Now, I want to go back a little bit because you were married to a lady who you knew something was wrong and you left. She tried to, she was going to kill you, but she actually shot the neighbor. Now, yeah. uh, what what took place after that? You were, you were basically without a place to live. I just lived on couches till I was able to get the house in Prineville. So I stayed with friends and stuff. Well, in Lapine, and you know that what happened was the, my my inner circle. A lot of people came to me and said, "You should have known better." Oh. And I didn't get a lot of compassion, so I just kind of gave up. And when I moved to Prineville, I tried to find a home church because I'd been attending one for 20 years and been the same one, and I couldn't find one. Oh. That, you know, what I look for is I look for churches that do things. Yeah. You know, and then when Sarah got sick, Daryl, 
my ex-wife's husband ran my business for two weeks while we went down to California because she had her first surgery, right. and we stayed in their house, and Daryl ran my business while we were making sure Sarah was okay. <laughs> wow. So your ex-wife's husband worked for you and kept your business going. Yeah. And sits with you in church. Yeah. Forgiveness is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Jesus is bigger than all that stuff, isn't he? Yeah, and I remember when I would tell people, they go, who's Daryl? Where would you get Daryl from? And I said, well, he's my ex-wife's husband. Yeah. And the guy looked at me, he goes, Mike, you lead a strange life. Yeah. And I go, it's a good one, though. Yeah, it's strange, but good. Yeah, I mean, but people don't, out there, they don't see this forgiveness thing, and you have to do it. Absolutely. It'll eat you alive. Oh, that, I've heard that said, that um, it's like a rope attached to somebody. When you forgive them, you let go of the rope. Because you release them. Yeah. It's not you. It's not them getting away with anything. It's you getting freedom. Well, and I never thought me and Brenda would be in the same room after our 2012. Right. And that was, I mean, she moved to Washington. Right. And, you know, I, I just, you know, that's where when you keep going to church, all these things happen to you. Mm -hmm. And then you just use the stuff you've learned. You don't even know it's, you've learned it till you start using it. You had a moment uh, in Shiloh where you said uh, God kind of broke through and talked to you uh, about fearing him and understanding who he is. Yeah. Well, I started drinking after Sarah got sick, and I hadn't drank in 30 years. I was an alcoholic, went to AA. Wow, 30 years sober. Yeah. And, I, and I hadn't drank in 30 years. Well, then when Sarah got sick and I couldn't find a church, I had no support group, so I just thought a couple, it's going to be okay. Well. Oh. You know, within a year and a half, I was right back to where I was, I, pretty much. I got the bad attitude. Oh. You know, me and Brenda quit talking again. Oh. And, and you know, Sarah just loved me through it. It was amazing. And then she found the wood. You guys, she found the wood and called me up. And she goes, Daddy, I found some wood, and you got to go to church here. It's really cool. <laughs> well, I started coming here. So let's talk about the wood project a little bit. That. That is a project where we cut wood and firewood and split it and deliver it to people, which has been a really, really great way for this church to grow and to be a part of because a lot of good things happen when we're cutting wood. We get to know each other. And then <clears throat> when we deliver wood, we get to help people. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about your daughter. You, you have lived a colorful life to this point, and your daughter is a wonderful gal, Sarah. Yeah. But you found out that she had cancer in what December 16th 2019 yeah she'd been battling for a long time yeah almost four years wow yeah going through hard things yeah and you know we're able to be there now as a as a family I mean I I had my my 66th birthday was in August and Sarah goes what do you want to do I go I want to be with family and that's you and your mom and Daryl because I don't have my yeah. blood relatives I don't know where they're at they were just Okay. Every time I hung around with them, I got hurt, so I quit hanging around with them. Okay. And, you know, it's, it's family is, is important. Yeah. It's real important. It really is, and a lot of times it's not defined by a blood relationship. No. It's more defined by common. No, and if somebody would have told me I'd be sitting in church with my ex-wife and her <laughs> husband and my sick daughter, I'd say, you're crazy. It's not going to happen. Well, it did, you know, and then when I first started coming to Shiloh, you know, I really like the way you give out the Word of God because I can understand it. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of simple myself. I yeah. have to figure it out. And there's some humor in there, but I remember <laughs> when I sat down one day, this voice said, you need to fear me. Because I used to hear people say, the fear of the Lord, you know, you need to fear the Lord. And I said, no, why would you want to fear something that takes care of you? Well, you know, we need to stay on this path that we're on, that I'm on. I need to I need to keep helping Pat and his wife. I mean, to see them smile is priceless. Yeah, you've been a real help. I mean, you came. I mean, wood was delivered to you, but then you came and you helped with wood. But then now we have a an outreach to Mitchell, which is building a house for the p pastors that have been there for eight, eight years or yeah. So. And then now they're going to have a place that's really super nice and comfortable to live and spend the rest of their time there and have something. Yeah. You've been a part of that and a big part, I mean, because your, your expertise in building is, is really awesome. So uh, that's the journey of volunteering at Shiloh, is that it'll connect you to other people. Yeah. It really will. It's good for you. 
So you were looking for a church that does something. I think that's, I hope we are always that church that doesn't just sit on our hands and, and just think about ourselves, but we get out there and do some help. Well, and I think sometimes we, we don't realize that we're going backwards till we're already back to where, I mean, I didn't think I would do that again. And then, you know, I was able to maintain for a while and then all of a sudden it, all that old stuff creeped right back in. But you know what? Uh, you were going through some hard stuff. Yeah. I mean, Sarah's got a, a serious form of cancer and she's battling it and battling it and doing just amazing, but it's a hard fight. Yeah, and as a dad, you feel like you wish you could do that fight for her, but it's kind of a. What's it feel like to be a father with a with a child who's super sick? Uh, I kind of, I don't want to say it. I I'm kind of okay with it because I believe she's going to be healed. Okay. And when we were up in Portland three weeks ago, and she was doing her radiation. She was in a wheelchair because they had to change her tubes and she couldn't walk, so I'm wheeling her all over um, on the tram and everything. So we come back that night and they're having a, uh, uh, what do they call that, where they sell food and, you know, vegetables and stuff. They were having a little thing, a farmer's market. Farmer's market. And it closed at 6. Well, we're it's about 5 o'clock, and so we're, we get off the tram, we start going, and Sarah goes, I want to go over there. And I go, no, I'm kind of tired. <laughs> so... I'm telling you, the, the voice of God said, dude, take her over there. <laughs> so you're telling your sick daughter that you're tired? <laughs> yeah, I was going to tell her. I, I did. I told her, I go, no, I'm tired. I'd rather go to the room. We can go later. She goes, they close at 6. Well, I'm telling you, within a block, this voice said, take her over there. So I just buzzed past the door of the hotel. She goes, where are we going? I go, we're going over there. And we spent time over there, and we bought dinner and bought her some apples and, yeah. you know, listening to that voice over my needs. You know, my need was, you know, it'd been a long day for me. Well, I was just sitting on my butt while she's having surgery. Right, right, You know, right. but I thought it was a long day. <laughs> it was like, you know, but getting out of myself and looking at the stuff she's been through, it's it's amazing, you know, that she still functions. Yeah. I mean, you know, and her spirit, she's not giving up. And, nope. you know, I had something to do with that. Yeah, that's cool. You know? Yeah, I think that's uh, one of the best things that we've, as parents can. can. Yeah, because you don't know you're doing a good job. You don't. You know, and then when they leave home at 18 and get married, you think, what happened? <laughs> you know? But Sarah's just always been different. Yeah. And, good. you know, I don't know why God put her on this path, but I know he healed me and Brenda yeah. first. And I remember when I walked in that hospital room and she had just woke up from 11-hour surgery, <laughs> she looked at both of us, and I know her little reaction was, wow, my mom and dad are standing in the same room. Wow. And we hadn't seen each other in years. Really? They're like, yeah, eight, nine years. So this has kind of brought you all together. Yeah, it, did. it has. It's brought us back as a family. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm able to go get, I mean, Brenda tries to do a lot, and we're able to talk about that. Hey, I can step in and help, because I'm retired now, so, yeah. you know, who wants to spend a week in Portland? But, you know, <laughs> I couldn't have spent it with a better person. I know that. We had a good time. Good for you. And Sarah didn't tell me. I don't know if you know what the tram is. Yep. Well, we had it's a to go scary thing in the sky that rocks. Oh, <laughs> well, I know. We had to go over there to do radiation the first night at 730, and it was dark. Ooh. And we're on this thing, and it's going up the hill at OHSU. And I go, Sarah, if we crash, we don't even know where we're going to land. <laughs> and then when it comes back, it goes a little faster. And, you know, she goes, we're going 16 miles an hour. I go, Sarah, I don't need to know that. <laughs> Don't look down. You know, and then I got to experience in the daytime. But, you know, see, she didn't tell me because she knew that would scare me. You know, she goes, we can walk over there because they had a walking bridge. I go, no, I'll take the tram. I'm good. You know, but I was looking around waiting for something to happen. <laughs> yeah. And wow. So your journey has been really uh, a, a process of God drawing you back to him. Yeah. And he's used different things in your life, obviously, talking to you at different times, letting you know something's not right, and you had to leave that relationship. It saved your life, probably. It did. And then then you find yourself uh, being reunited uh, relationally with your ex-wife uh, to a degree so that you can be a family again around your daughter's illness. That's something. Yeah, and we'd been married for 17 years. Yeah. It wasn't like we were just married. I mean, we've been, we went through a lot of stuff as yeah. being married. And then your then your uh, wife's husband is your friend and close friend. You sit by him in church. Yeah. 
Yeah. You're, I not, mean, you're not normal, dude. No. <laughs> and see, Brenda drug me to, to the church I went to. In 2000, or 1999, she goes, you need to go to church or else. <laughs> and so I went, and I just slowly fit in and I started doing things and and people taught me to journal and yeah you know and that's what I do now I get up in the morning I have four books I read and I write a whole page to God about oh. what I'm grateful for oh good for you not what I want oh you know because I've learned that through reading these books you know I need okay. to thank him and worship him and praise him and see that I had lost all that yeah and wow. I do it every morning I mean I'm thankful Sarah's alive and you know she's still going to the doctor and you know yeah. She's going to get healed. I know she is. Yeah, and I've always felt that. I love your faith. So uh, <clears throat> what would you tell somebody in church who's struggling maybe with alcoholism or, or addictions? or uh, Maybe they're doing okay, but maybe they're not. Maybe they're secretly not doing so good. Well, if I see people struggling like that guy that you baptized a few months ago yeah. and, and he quit. He said he drank for years and quit. Well, yeah. I caught him before and I said, dude. Hold on to what you got today because I go, I was sober for 30 years and I go, I thought I could handle it. And it all came back within six months. Wow. And I, you know, I made a point of letting him know because I know what it feels like to think, gee, I've got that whipped. I'm good. That's probably not a good place to be when you think you got it. I think scripture says if you take heed, if you think you stand. Yeah. Because that's the dangerous spot. And, you know, I mean, alcohol was a real big problem in my life and, you know, it took me down yeah. and I... Went right back to it because I didn't know what else to do. You know, and, and now you do. Well, yeah, and I mean the depression thing. I went to the doctor about six months ago after I quit drinking. And I said, "Look, I feel like I'm going to die every day." And I would get up, and this voice would say, "Today's the day." Well, I know it wasn't Jesus; it was Satan. Right. And then, so she put me on medication. But there was years that I did not want to take. I thought, "I don't need this; it's a crutch." Yeah, and you know. Now it's helping me because I was open to it. It's like yeah. I couldn't do another day. Yeah, boy, I'm, I'm with you, boy. If I hurt my knee, I, I eat Advil when I need need to because it helps me. Yeah, and, and, and the brain isn't any different. It needs a little help. Sometimes. You know, and when Sarah was growing up, she was on antidepressants, and so was Brenda. Well, I used to give them a hard time. I go, you guys don't need that stuff. Oh. Well, you know, now <laughs> I'm on the same stuff they're on, <laughs> and I think you know God put these things in, in our lives so it can help us. So this journey with God is kind of messy. It, it has different twists and turns. Sometimes we're all healthy. Sometimes we have sickness. Yeah. You guys are going through a super difficult battle with cancer of Sarah, her, your daughter. How's she doing right now? Uh, she's okay. She's in California, on her way home from California. They finally got to go somewhere. They left Thursday to go see some friends from the Navy. Good for them. And, you know... It was her birthday on Friday, and I didn't get to spend it with her. Well, that kind of like when I first heard she was leaving, I was like, how dare you do that? You know, but we'll celebrate her birthday when she gets back. Yeah, well, she does have a husband, too, that she wanted to go yeah. with. Yeah, <laughs> and he's just a god shot. I mean, yeah. you know, when they met each other, yeah, it was amazing because they got married right out of high school, and they're, they're really tight together. I mean, you know, good. I mean, he never left her. You know, a lot of people just boogie when somebody gets sick. Yeah. You know, it's a it's, tough assignment. It's yeah, it is. Assignment. Yeah, it's really hard. So, uh, talking to Mike Smith, I want everybody to remember Mike Smith's name. So it's, it's Smith, like half of the world, and Mike, which is like the other half of the world. So yeah. it's pretty easy to remember. Mike has been a, a recipient of the wood, but more than that, he's been a volunteer during the wood project, and also turned into a to a major volunteer of Shiloh, and he helps in a lot of ways, and he's been especially helping with Mitchell, the project there. So we're really grateful for you, Mike, and for this journey. But I want to talk to maybe somebody who's just tuning in and haven't really got involved yet in church, and they've kind of like waiting to see where they should. Maybe they're just, you know. Uh, so we're talking to church people here that maybe would like to get involved a little more than they are. What would you say to them? I'd just say jump in with both feet. You're not going to get wet. <laughs> just go for it. Yeah, it's like... You know, when this chance came up for me, I I didn't want to do it. I'm retired. This is my time to kick back. And then all of a sudden the Mitchell thing came up and it's like, I mean, I got hooked up with Neil and, you know, a couple of weeks ago I was up there and he was there and he looked at me and he goes, Mike, we really get a lot done when you're there. <laughs> and I go, thank you because, yeah. you know, it's a, he complimented me on my work ethic. 
Yeah. Well, you know, it's one good thing I have, and I think we need to do that to each other. You, yeah. you know, instead of saying, gee, you can't do wood, well, come and help us do wood. Yeah. And you learn how to work, too. Some of these guys, I, I tell you, they outwork me like crazy, but yeah. it's, it's, it's fun to be part of a project that's getting something done. Yeah, it's like Pat's house. I want to get him in by Christmas. That's my goal. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going to keep going because I think we can make it. We've yeah. got a couple months. I appreciate that, man. You really know? do. And well, we're going to have to have your whole crew here on, on this podcast one of these days and interview all of you. So, because that, yeah. that would be a cool, cool time together. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be. <laughs> well, what can we pray for you about? Any specific thing in your life as we close this podcast out? Well, just for the anxiety to just stay away because I still get overwhelming. Okay. Some days I just get overwhelmed. Okay. I mean, I don't have a lot going on this week. I'm still kind of working a little bit because it's hard to get rid of the customers after 26 years. <laughs> That's for sure. But I think I might run up and help Pat on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. And, nice. You know, because... My my idle time is not good for me. Boy, do I hear you there. You know, I've got to stay busy and, yeah. you know. Well, good for you. You know yourself pretty well. And you know what works and what doesn't. And well, I, I just don't want to get back on that highway to hell again. Right. And congratulations on your sobriety again. And that you're going to string together another 30 years and it's going to be amazing. Yeah. But so let's pray for you. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So, Lord, thank you for uh, Mike. And uh, all that you have done in his life, the crazy things that uh, have taken place where you have been in the middle of it and you are encouraging him and keeping him safe. Thank you, Lord, for his heart to fear you in such a way that he respects you above all else. And we respect you too, God. And we just ask that you would help him with this anxiety, help him to keep going the direction you've called him on. Thank you for his talents and abilities that he's using for your sake and for the kingdom. We ask you to bless his whole family and be with Sarah today, especially as she travels back from California. Touch her, Lord. Just We ask you to help her uh, and just re heal her in, in your precious name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, man. Yeah. We'll, we'll play uh, Lauren Daigle music on the way out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right.